I had a conversation about flying saucers some years ago with Lehman. Because <laughs> I'm scientific, I know all about flying saucers. So I said, I don't think there are flying saucers. So the other, my antagonist said, is it impossible that there are flying saucers? Can you prove that it's impossible? I said, no, I can't prove it's impossible. It's just very unlikely. That, they say, you are very unscientific. If you can't prove it impossible, then why, how can you say it's likely that it's unlikely? Well, that's the way, that is scientific. It is scientific only to say what's more likely and less likely and not to be proving all the time possible and impossible. To define what I mean, I finally said to him, listen, I mean that from my knowledge of the world that I see around me, I think that it is much more likely that the reports of flying saucers are the result of the known irrational characteristics of terrestrial intelligence <laughs> rather than the unknown rational efforts of extraterrestrial intelligence. Hi, DPR Jones here. Welcome to part three of my series, in which I invite clever people to explain scientific questions that I don't understand. To understand this problem, you first have to imagine an S-shaped lawn sprinkler, shown here from above. We all know that if you pass water through it, it rotates. Whilst at Princeton, Feynman exercised his mind on a problem that had been floating around for some years. It was this. If you submerge the water sprinkler into a tank of water and suck the water through it rather than eject it, which way will the sprinkler rotate? This is a view of the problem from above. Feynman was so intrigued by this question that he built an experiment to find out the answer. Unfortunately, instead of using a pump to suck water through the system, he instead decided to force it through by sealing off the glass tank he was using and forcing compressed air into it. The experiment ended in disaster. The pressure caused the glass tank to explode and sent shards of broken glass around the laboratory and also caused some flooding. But despite his failure, there is an answer to the problem. What do you think it is? In this view, shown from above the tank, does the sprinkler rotate clockwise, in other words, as if drawn into the water it is sucking? or anticlockwise, as it would if pumping water out on a lawn. There is, of course, a third alternative. Does it remain stationary? Unlike the other questions I have asked in previous videos, I actually know the answer to this question. It can be found fairly readily off the internet, and I'll post a link to the answer in a week or so. So my challenge is this. Without cheating and looking, what way do you think the sprinkler rotates? Clockwise, anticlockwise, or not at all? Post your thoughts without cheating and looking up the answer. Whilst you're thinking about that, here's another clip of Feynman. People say to me, are you looking for the ultimate uh, laws of physics? No, I'm not. I'm just looking to find out more about the world. And if it turns out there is a simple ultimate law that explains everything, so be it. That would be very nice to discover. If it turns out it's like an onion with millions of layers and we're just sick and tired of looking at the layers, then that's the way it is. But whatever way it comes out, its nature is there and she's going to come out the way she is. And therefore, when we go to investigate it, we shouldn't pre-decide what it is we're trying to do except to find out more about it. If you say, but it, your problem is, why do you find out more about it? If you thought that you were trying to find out more about it because you're going to get an answer to some deep philosophical question, you may be wrong. It may be that you can't get an answer to that particular question by finding out more about the character of nature. But I don't look at it. My, my interest in science is to simply find out about the world. And the more I find out, the better it is. I like to find out. <laughs>